And welcome to the sixth session in the Getting Started with Plexus 2D. And this time we're going to focus on the flow conditions mode. First, I'm going to do a quick recap of the modes that we discussed in the previous sessions. And then I'm going to talk about how we can define water levels in this flow conditions mode. Oral water levels, user water levels, what's the difference? How to set up a global water level and how you can apply different water conditions and boundary conditions related to water pressures for the soil polygons. And finally, we're going to talk about screens. So quick recap of the working modes that we have in Plexus 2D input. In five steps, we go from soil mode to structures mode. In previous session, we discussed the mesh mode, flow conditions, so that's the one that we're currently going to discuss, and finally will be stage construction, after which we can re run the calculation. So here we're going to focus on flow conditions. And first something on water levels. The borehole water levels, these are automatically generated from the water information that you provide in the borehole definition. Uh, and by default, they are set to head. Uh, we can also have user defined pore pressure. If you have a single borehole, Plexus will create an horizontal water level based on the head value that you specify in borehole and it will extend to the model boundaries. If you have multiple boreholes and you sp specify different heads, Plexus will do a linear interpolation between these water surfaces that come from the borehole head definition. A user water level, as the name already mentioned, the user water level is created by the user. And in Plexus 2D, we can just draw this new user water level to have a new water level. Now, one thing to realize is that Plexus keeps the water levels as a collection of water levels. So for each stage, we will have to set the global water level. And this will be the default water level for all clusters. So for all soil volumes that we have, the global water level will be used unless we set a specific water definition for that specific volume. Um, I'll show that in the next slide. But the global water level um, can be a borehole water level or a user water level. You as a user can decide how to change that. The water levels can be specified for each individual volume, as I already mentioned. So any volume, and you can see here in the image, uh, we have a global water level. And um, it's indicated with this blue line that you can see here on screen. So this is the... So you can see here the global water level, which has been set as the global water level, but we can specify the, the water levels for each individual volume. So for instance, in this case, we clicked here the top bottom and set the options here. And so we have different options. We can set a global level. This is the default option. It will refer to the global water level that we set. We have the custom level, so we can specify a different water level for that specific volume. We can set a specific groundwater head, so we just specify a groundwater head value. We can have a user-defined pore pressure. So with that, in that case, you can set up your own pore pressure and your own increment with depth. We have an interpolate option. So in that case, it will do a vertical interpolation from the water pressures which are on above that specific volume to the water level, to the water, to the water pressure, which is below that volume. So it's a vertical interpolation. And we also have a dry option uh, in order to set a specific volume to dry. For instance, in the case that we're considering here, deep excavation, you want to do it 
dry excavation, so we have to set the water pressures inside the excavation to dry. So we can make these changes through right-clicking the mouse. So we just right-click on the so we just right-click on the volume. A pop-up window will show up with the options to change that. We can also select the volume and then we go into the water conditions option and change it there in the selection explorer. So let's see how that looks. So we're going to continue from the example that we stopped with from our previous session. So we have already generated a mesh and then we're going to go to the flow conditions mode and show you these options which I've just discussed. So here we are with the generated mesh from our previous session and we're going to go to flow conditions mode. You can see again the window changes, the context menu on the sideboard changes. We have still the select options here. Here we have the option to move water levels. So if we have a user defined water level, we can move it. A closed water boundary. If you run groundwater flow analysis, you can set a closed boundary. We can set clusters dry using this tool. So we can just click on a cluster here on this volume. It will automatically be set to dry. You can see the color changes to gray. And also if we select this option here, in the water conditions here, you can see it's set to dry. In this case, we're going to back to global level. We also have here the option to set the cluster to global water level to change it back to the default setting. An option here is to create a new water level. So with this, we can create a new user water level. So for the final stage, we're going to do a groundwater flow analysis for a dry excavation. In this case, I'm already going to draw the phreatic level. So I will use create water level. And the water level, I will specify that it will not change on, our, on my boundary condition. But I'm going to make sure that the lowest excavation level is set to um, to be dry here and again on the other side I also don't want any change of the external water level outside my chosen domain so here we have a new user water level indicated in red it's called user water level one so the naming also clearly indicates what the source is if I select the other one you can see it's borehole water level one and what's nice is when you click on this, all clusters associated with this global water level will turn into green. So that's also a good way to check if all the different volumes inside your model are assigned to the global water level. There are two ways to change the global water level. We can do it here. We can click on it, use the right click button and say make global. And you can see it's changing here directly. Another option here to do that is use the model conditions of the model explorer. So we go here to the bottom left side, model conditions. We will go to water. And you can see here global water level set to user water level one. Now, in this case, I want to go back to the original configuration, borehole water level one. And we are back to the setting here. The next button here is to import water levels. So we can choose external files that have a definition of the water level. We can import that and use that to set the global water level. The final option here is the preview phase. And with that, we can check if the water settings that we have defined are correct. When we do that, Plexus output will be launched. And here we see the results of the preview. And what we see here is the definition of the pore pressures. As we can see, we do not have a legend. So we'll activate it here from the view menu. And we can see that here we have the options to inspect the pore pressures. We can also look at the 
groundwater head next to the pore pressures. As you can see here, we have a uniform groundwater head of 23 meters, which is exactly the same as the groundwater head that we defined in the borehole. We can also see the phreatic level here. You can see here this blue line. This indicates the phreatic line. Sometimes we do not see it, but we have to activate it here through the geometry mode. If we hide the phreatic line, of course we won't see it, but we can reactivate it here and see it. So back to the input program. So here we're back in the input program. And as I mentioned before, we can also change the pore pressures per individual volume. For instance here, use the option to set a custom water level. So we can change it only for this specific volume. But we can also set the cluster directly to dry. Another option would be to use the interpolate pore pressure option. And you can see here, it directly also turns into a different color, in this case orange. And maybe um, we want to change this custom water level to user water level one. You can see also that the associated water level for this specific volume changes to this green one. And you can see it also has a sli slightly different color compared to the other ones. And the easy way to check, of course, if everything is assigned properly, click on it and we can see all the green items which are associated with the global water level. If we want to select the other one, we can see it's only this one. I will change the settings back to the original configuration because that's what we're going to need when setting up our construction stages uh, and this will be the starting condition. So I will make sure we set it to global. We can also do multiple select and select Set cluster to global water level, and we can change them all back to this one. And of course, I want to make sure that my original water level is the proper one. So now we've been reset to the original configuration. Before we go to the stage construction settings and define our construction sequence, one final note here on screens. In order to prevent water to flow through structural elements, for instance, or to have some kind of blocking screen, you will have to activate the interface elements inside the flow conditions mode. And that will look like this. So we just select here the entire item. So here I'm going to activate the interface for the flow. And I click on it here, and you can see it here turns into orange. I'll do the same thing here for the positive interface. And as you can see here, it turns into orange. Once the interface is activated for the groundwater flow analysis in the flow conditions mode, so we have to check in flow conditions mode if these items are indeed set to orange. Only then they will block the groundwater flow. I will switch them off again. And later you will see that we will have to activate them again. So all interface elements here are shown with gray symbols. So that means they are inactive. So in our next session, we're going to go to the stage construction mode and focus on our phase definitions first.